Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, this is Dr. Manish Kothari. Uh, welcome to Bombay Spine Society Case of the Month. Today we have uh, with us Dr. Sambhav Shah. He is an eminent uh, consultant spine surgeon at uh, various hospitals uh, of South Bombay. So welcome, Dr. Sambhav. Uh, on to you. Hi. Hi, Manish. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, BSS, for giving this opportunity to me. And today I have chosen a special case. So I'll just straight away start with the case. It was a 34-year-old architect. He was unable to walk since 15 days, significant pain in the left leg, mild pain in the right, minimal back pain. Uh, he did complain of numbness around his anus and mild difficulty in voiding. So when I first saw him in the hospital, he was walking like this. And it's typical of a high stepping gait. And the minute you see this, you know that this patient has a foot drop. And if you see the right side also, he's not able to dorsiflex completely. So <clears throat> on examination, the left dorsiflexion was completely zero. Right side was three out of five. Ankle reflexes were absent. Uh, he had some numbness around his anus and over the foot. Uh, however, the inner tone was good. SLR on the left side was 30. And on doing a pre void and post void, <clears throat> there was 300 ml of post void urine. So, so not typically a complete cord icona with retention, but obviously he had some symptoms of urinary incontinence. Uh, we got an MRI scan, the scan done and we saw that there was a huge central disc at the L3-4 level compressing the central cord icona. You can also appreciate in the MRI that the, in the uh, bladder is full. Uh, and the axial cut does show that there is complete, the cord icona, we, we could just can't see on the axial cut, and it was completely uh, uh, compressed by the, this piece of the disc. Uh, and this, again, mind you, this was 15 days uh, with complete left-sided foot drop, Manish. So, typically, uh, you would be here thinking about, if you see the previous star also, he has some disc degeneration at L3-4, he has like a black disc, a central disc, how you know, back pain, he has mild facetal hypertrophy as well here. So, I think there would be no right and wrong even if we did a pure laminectomy or we went in for a fusion also. Yeah. Uh, so Manish, what would what do you think? What would you uh, probably do for this case in this instance? Yeah, for someone with a uh, you know deficit, your obviously your main goal is going to be to decompress uh, in the as safe manner as possible. And uh, then you are also because of the black disc, your you know kind of your radar is open. Should I fuse? Should I not fuse? What yeah. would be the best, uh, you know, to prevent any form of uh, future uh, disc degeneration and back pain? So all those uh, questions start coming in. That is, so for me, probably, uh, you know, this will be probably a plain decompression because it doesn't look like uh, he has significant back pain. All the, although on the MRI, there is some black disc. So uh, I would love to see what yeah. you've done somewhere. So, uh, so probably, as you rightly said, I mean, if we are going for a pure decompression, it will be like a central laminectomy. Uh, along with a mild uh, removal of the medial facet and then you would probably approach from both sides and that's absolutely right that's what probably everyone would do including me as well but uh, I have ventured into endoscopic science spine surgery and I'm a bigger fan of interlaminar approach but this I think is mm -hmm. one case where transforaminal would uh, approach would really really help uh, especially because you can completely approach it from the foramen and the, the dura will be pushed uh, posteriorly anyway so when you dock your uh, scope in the foramen, uh, you, you, the disc will be right in front of you. And and if you are able to obviously get this through uh, the scope, then we are saving a lot for those patients with regards to the, the lamina, which we then don't need to remove at all, you know, in this situation. And that's what I did for this patient where the only difference which I do in this case is I try and go as flat a trajectory as possible. So I'm able to completely see the epidural space along with the anterior annulus and the dura in front of me. In this case would be the disc initially, but then my main goal would be to see the dura uh, in totality. So I took him under local anesthesia uh, with mild sedation as and when required, but he was continuously giving me feedback whether he had any kind of a, any leg sensations when I was docking my, my scope as well. And once I was in my scope, so at 12 o'clock you see is is the facet. Uh, at uh, 9 o'clock is, is the Superior part at uh, three o'clock is uh, infer uh, the inferior part, or oh, sorry, towards the legs, and six o'clock is anterior basically. And here you see basically, uh, I, I generally like to see the pedicle also in such cases. So lower down here at three o'clock, you see just the pedicle of the L5, the lower pedicle. And once I am the uh, anteriorly at six, you are seeing the annulus and the disc. Obviously, I had a small breakage of the instrument over here which we are uh, then removing. And once uh, I went there, I'm probing right here. What you see is that disc piece. Uh, I am just probing it around to see. And then we felt that it was released and I've removed the whole piece of chunk 
And what I also do is, uh, this is a quite a central disc. The patient also has some right sided symptoms. So it's very difficult to, uh, you know, uh, realize whether I've done a good job on the right side. So I've, I take my radio frequency probe in this situation and then try and go right across. I also see through the, the CM whether I have gone right across to the other side. And when I do this, uh, again, the patient is the best feedback for me. It's like a live neuro monitoring where he's saying, yes, I can now feel pain going. I can now feel something going down my right side. So he does feel that. Uh, and with the nerve hook, we are just probing if there is anything else left at all. And, uh, you know, and then it's done. The incision size is uh, is hardly anything, and the patient was mobilized immediately. And if you see here, this is his uh, video, which we have taken uh, one month post surgery, and he had completely recovered his uh, his foot drop. Uh, even the right side power was back to normal, and 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 he's doing very very well. So this case was done by me around three years ago. So it's been three years post op. I've tried a million times to ask him to get an MRI done for me, but he was very claustrophobic. Even the first time we had to do it under anesthesia. But he's doing pretty well. I mean, at three years follow-up, uh, I did review the literature, and obviously, with regards to <clears throat> transforaminal endoscopy use for uh, corda interna and corona patients, I didn't find that much material available because now, slowly, steadily, since endoscopes are evolving and people are getting more and more confident of doing it, now we do see them, uh, and 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 all these papers have also shown good results. But obviously, only time will tell uh, as to how much we've saved for this patient with regards to his natural anatomy which we would have normally removed uh, the whole of lamina, the interspinous ligaments, etc. So I think with time, we will realize the advantage of trying to do uh, minimally invasive and trying to save the natural anatomy for the patient. And uh, and that's when we'll be, we actually be able to compare it with the other uh, surgeries which we have. But for the time being, yes, this patient has done quite well and done a couple of other cases as well. So hopefully we'll know much better in the near future. Thanks a lot. Fantastic case, uh, uh, Samba. Uh, quick questions for you. So the traditional teaching is that you know you need to make sure that you decompress the uh, nerves completely under full vision. Of course, how much resection you do will depend on the level and the size of the disc and you know, the, whether the disc is hard, soft. All those multiple questions that come in. So uh, first question to you is, you know, how do you counsel uh, the patient for an endoscopy in a potential uh, corda equina? Right. So see, basically, uh, not just for a corda equina, but for any endoscopic arm surgery I'm doing, I'm not using it as a tool just to sell the surgery, but I've always told each and patients of mine that if required, I'll have to convert it to open. So even in this situation, I had clearly told the patient that once I'm going in, and if I do feel I'm not getting that big of a chunk of a disc coming out, or if you don't tell me any relief immediately, etc., I'm going to turn you back, I'm going to induce you, and I'm going to open it up. In fact, during this case, I also had my screws on standby also. Right. So even now, even though I've done around more than 200 cases now of any kind of endoscopy, I always have my tubes on standby. Uh, in such situations, I always have my, uh, my screws on standby. So uh, the patient was very well told that if you don't feel confident enough. But here in this case, if you see, I was able to take my cautery and my instruments right across and I could see it on the C-arm also. So the key is here in the AP, I am seeing my instruments across the dura, and on lateral, I am seeing them behind the disc. So if the if the instrument was inside the disc in lateral, then I know I am still steeper. But because in even in the lateral, when my instrument is on the other side and lateral is just behind the disc, I know I am flat in, with my tra trajectory and I'm right up across the other side. So that's what gives you then the confidence that you've done a good job for the patient. Right. And uh, I'm sure the, the, the video that you showed, you could see the dura, the anterior uh, edge of the dura. So do you yeah. take that as yeah. your endpoint? You know, and, and uh, much of the annulus uh, kind of was there was a defect, which would, you were also seen in a kind of a, a interlaminar uh, approach. So uh, yes. do you, how do you like? Do you chase the annulus as well? Or do you yes, so so obviously with with uh, because of the time limit, uh, I didn't show you the whole video, but I did probe the annulus. I did see the rent of the annulus from where the disc popped out. I did probe it. We also have like have your angled forceps, so you can put them, you know, uh, anteriorly. You can put them on the other side just to prove if there are any more free pieces, loose pieces, etc. So though uh, every time, yes, I I would I would not in this situation. I didn't want to go like centrally into the disc uh, or or try and scoop out. But uh, definitely went into the annulus with my disc forceps uh, to probe if there are any more free pieces. 
uh, but as I said, because we're doing it under LA, uh, I mean, the patient gives you a lot of feedback. And throughout the procedure, he was uncomfortable. There was a time when, you know, we were think- I was thinking of sedating him when I was in the Jura. In fact, when I was trying to remove this piece of the disc, he, he screamed with pain, with a lot of pain. Uh, but the minute that this piece was out, uh, the screaming stopped completely, you know. And uh, that's the advantage of doing this in the local. And otherwise, if you ask me, uh, I, I prefer doing it under GA actually, because I feel the patients are much more comfortable. Uh, but this was a situation case where I wanted to do it under local, and the anesthetist is always on standby. Otherwise, usually what I do is once I dock my camera, I give the patient some sedation. Yeah. At least they are comfortable. But in this case, I wanted him because I wanted the live feedback. Right. Especially if you're very close to the nerve roots, you want that feedback. Exactly. From the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I think that was a fantastic case, uh, uh, Samba. Thank you very much for joining us on the Bombay Spine Society case of the month. I hope you can show us many more. Thank you. Thank you, Manish, and thank you, Bombay Spine Society, for the opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you.